what? The car's not in the garage? Yes, um, you can drive the car, sort of, like, you know, roll and all that. Still no tune, no nothing, but um, it's gauges time. It's, it's wiring the gauges, fitting the gauges, wiring the cutout valve, wiring the firmer fans. Basically, you leave the wiring to the end because, you, you know, that's the part you don't like the most. Um, and we need to bleed the coolant and check the oil because when we changed the oil drain, we lost a bit of oil when we had that little bit of a pickle. But now, um, got these gauges. I don't know if you remember the auto gauge. That's like a $4.30 mount or whatever I paid for it. Um, yes, the budget has run thin. We got 60 bucks to finish the car. The FMU is already on there. We're, we're ready roughly 2,100. 2,100, 2,000, like I'm just trying to work it out here. So let's try to keep it to around 2,200. That'd be sick because then, like I said, I can tell you how you can keep it under two, two, two grand. Let's go take a look inside the car and, and, and we'll find somewhere to put these. Yeah, I'm sorry, guys. The car could have been a bit more cleaner. Um, it's okay. It's been parked for 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 uh, Now, for the gauges, I'll show you a few spots where I think it's pretty cool. But down here... The only catch-22 is, um, sorry about that, the coffee cup, is you got to look down. It's fine. I don't always look at gauges. Let's be honest. They're just a reference. This is probably the coolest sleeper mode right there. But now I was trying to see if I can see the gauges. And the first maybe two, three weeks of driving, I'm going to be monitoring those gauges a lot, especially because I'm running an FMU. Um, so it's not practical for me to do this and, you know, Another spot which might work is actually here because now that's slow enough that you can still, oh, look, what's going on with my dash? Is there a, a check engine light? Think about putting them there. Now, not so sleeper, but look, look at that moth, but not so, um, not so in your face. No gauge pillar, none, uh, none of this stuff. Um, so, yeah, I'm thinking about going down that path. I'll give it a try. I want something that's, you know, just going to be pretty simple. As for the switch for the cutout valve, thinking around here, there's still a spot here. Um, and, in, and in the future, when I, when I run the beast mode cutout valve, I'd probably put it here. Or I could put that one there now straight away and then leave that for the future. So it's pretty good when your car's pretty basic. You've got a lot of switches, like you can actually put in spots that were supposed to have something. Um, and the Fermo fans, I'm going to go to the factory uh, Fermo fan shroud and cut the plug and basically wire into that and just run a new earth to the body if I can. And yeah, it's pretty straightforward. I'm just going to get straight into it. You're just going to see me doing bits and pieces. Like I said, this stuff's optional except the Fermo fan part. Um, but I still want to just put it out there on video because I know someone out there will be like, oh, but I need these gauges. Fermo fan, we are going to reuse this plug. It's got three wires because obviously it's got something here. It says it's got some resistor. It's this green thing. There's obviously a, a science to it. Um, might just work out temperatures or something. Look, if the I can keep this, and I think I might just pull it off and put it somewhere. If not, then um, I'll just monitor the engine. If it starts overheating, then what that means is I'll just get myself one of those David, Davis Craig controllers or one of the fake ones online. I, I got it in my other car and you just basically set the temperature and you just put a probe, you, sh you shove it between the fins and then you basically you override the, the control for the car. I don't want that because of the AC, but um, worst comes to us, we'll go there. And then you can actually do a trigger wire for the AC. So... Then I just have to find that and you can force it on as soon as the, the AC is on. You get that off the clutch pulley. See, so let's hope we don't go down that path. I'm going to pull this apart. Chop, chop, chop. Get straight into it. Now, I'm putting these female terminals on all the, the wires that were on the, um, the Fermo fan loom, the factory one, because I don't know what's active, what's not. I'm not going to just throw it in the engine bay, turn it on, and the thing starts arcing. Plus, 
these barely cost anything. I'll leave them on there. If I ever have to return the factory firma fan back, it's not hard to just put um, uh, um, a mail terminal in there. So these will just be there just in case the car, like, you know, it, it's very cheap it, um, insurance in the scheme of things. So it's a good habit. Don't just chop everything away and just be like, oh, yeah, I don't need it, you know, because you never know. Or if the next person buys the car off you, you at least be nice to them, you know, and if they needed to do something, it's right there for them. Okay, with a bit of testing if the car on and the AC is on, I can verify that the blue wire is is definitely the wire you want to be tapping off. That's the active. If you're keen, you can use the earth here, which is um, the earth or negative, which is actually black. So it's funny because it's blue and black and these... These Chinese Fermo fans are actually blue and black. So it actually, if you were someone to just guess the wiring, which I don't recommend, you would have got it right. So that, that would have been your, your one win. As soon as you do that in a cast area, you're going to be blowing up a lot of fuses. But um, so I'm going to wire them, them in, give them another test. The reason why I'm not turning on the car and showing you guys, because I'm going to leave that to later. It's nice and noisy, actually. So you won't be able to hear me um, anyways. So... Um, I'll quickly wire that, uh, uh, that in and yeah, we'll give them a test. Now I'm gonna um, make them share one terminal because I just noticed that how long the actual factory firmo plug is which is pretty cool um is this a, a lazy way of doing things I don't know is it actually still going to work perfect yes it is it just means that the fans are now one plug I can't just disconnect one fan but at the same time it's less wiring in the engine but I want to try to keep it a bit clean you know all the weekend so yeah Okay, so right. yes, the firma fans they work. So thumbs up. Like I said, just turn on the 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 AC or verify anything for your home. turn them on straight away. Um, now to do the gauges, the gauges and the cutout valve. And then I think some moment of truth. Go for a drive and see how lean it's running. Because I know it's going to run lean. Because I know that, that maybe the 4 to 1 disc in the FMU is not going to be enough. But you know what? You might just fluke things with this car. And these things I've known to fluke on a, on bigger injectors and a fuel pressure regulator. So I could have stopped that and that, and that would have been it. But I have as well read that the car runs poorly. And cars don't really run poorly on FMUs. They just run a bit rich. So fingers crossed that works. If not... We left easy access here, so uh, so 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 we could swap out the ratio disc. That's why it's it, it's on an angle. I'm not that stupid. It's just that you you need a future proof. So we're just gonna go now. Put on some gauges, and um yeah, it, we're moving along. Hopefully we can turn key by today or the tomorrow. So so I have decided. I actually want to put the gauges here now. I'll tell you why. Firstly, it's easy to, to run the wiring loom. You just got to go through here. Secondly, just in the scheme of things, some nincompoop in the past has actually had a hard time with this. I don't really want to try to fight it. So I'm assuming I can maybe put a nut and bolt in this trim that goes around, which is pretty easy to um, take off. It's two, two screws. Just thought I'd, le I'd let you know, guys, be before I yank them on it. And most importantly, you can actually, you might not see it on camera, but I can still see the speedo. And for those that know, in, in Australia, you do more than 40 in a 40 zone. You get double the merits. Basically, you get a nice fist up, or you get a nice fist up your ass. So, um, yeah, it's not ideal. And you don't want to speed anyways, especially in school zones. You know, it's, it's not a good thing. Um, I'm not preaching, it's just the truth. Um, so, I'll do that now. And yes, for the record, I do have, I've just temporarily um, yanked it out. I've hardwired an OBD sensor that, that 
pretty much just it tucks in and it connects to the the Android deck. Now, it's nice for the gauges. You see the coolant temperature on that, which generally these cars don't have. But as well, it came in handy because I had to clear the um, the check engine light for the, the second O2 sensor because I finally wired it in. So I just basically went on the car stereo and just clear fault code. That's not running when the car's off. That's why I've hardwired it to a point that it only turns on when the car's on because these OBD sensors that you get from eBay, you plug them in, they're always on. You're going to drain your battery, they get hot, all that stuff. It's not hard. Just get the loom, find the wire, the extension loom, cut it, hardwire it to a fuse, get one of those blade fuses, the adapters from like JCA or somewhere, an electric store. Your life is good. Now the cluster's off. Like I said, it's only two screws and you just got to pry it with a screwdriver. Now I've just bent this a bit. I'm thinking about just putting it in like that and maybe if I can get a screw from the back here to the front and tighten something there. Now um, you do want to use screws. Don't use double side tape. You don't want to be thinking about your gauges melting when the sun's up and it's very hot in Australia. So you don't really use double sided tape unless you hate yourself. Um, so yeah, I'll do that. And then when we're then we got to work out the wiring and I'm going to test fit this one. So I did put those, those, the, the nut and bolt in there. And just like that, I went from nut and bolt to potentially using four cable ties that will not be seen. Why is that? Because of the angle of the dangle, or whatever you call it. Um, it's easier to just go from here to there. Like there's like a little gap there. Put a hole, zip, and there's that rubber thing. You shouldn't see that. Um, and you shouldn't move because four ties that are extremely tight. And if there's ever an issue with these gauges, you know. Whereas when you try to put the screws, see how there's like a big. Yeah, they, they don't give you much room and there's nothing in the center for me to screw one going up so i'm not going to sit there wasting too much time on this uh as long as they're nice and they're tight in there and um and dead straight that'll be nice ta-da four cable ties i'll give them a trim that should slot slot in there um yeah and if i ever have any issues it's just a matter of clip 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 take the gauges out because this can be brittle now i'm not saying it cracked with me but you're screwing so close to the edge and the heat i don't want to you know i'm just worried about a nut and bolt i thought it'd be a good idea at the start and then but yeah okay we'll do, i'll quickly trim this and we'll get straight to the wiring i can talk about this all day <laughs> okay and just like that i've sort of mounted them they're ready, ready to go tape them i labeled which one's boost gauge uh, pretty straightforward to wire these. Now, um, it's just a positive and a negative, and the the green wire goes to whatever sensor it is, like in the the oil pressure. Now, the map sensor for the boost gauge needs its own positive and negative, but that's fine. Um, I want to issue an apology. I was calling these auto gauge, which is a very cheap knockoff gauge on eBay. I take that back. It is not auto gauge. It's it's these have actually copied auto gauge and it's called dragon gauge, flaming dragon. So um when you copy something that's already shit. Well hopefully they work, but that's why I put cable ties if I don't like them. Get rid of them and actually spend some money on some gauges. But hey, come on, two thousand dollar challenge. Yeah, I've had the cars with Turbo Smart and all that. This is fun. So um so yeah, I'm going to go chuck these in there. I don't need to go too crazy on the wiring for you guys. You know, pretty straightforward and it's not a... And you guys, each car is different. And one more thing, I just got to quickly show you. Let me zoom in on the car. Now, I don't know if you can see that, but the front dump pipe is still not the lowest thing in the car. It's actually that oil splash thingamabob. And let me get back out here. And... um. It looks like it's sticking out, but I think the factory exhaust used to sit that low. It, it's actually not lower than the sump. So part of me wants to heat wrap it, part of me doesn't, but those welds are going to be so hot and there's going to be so much rain hitting it and we'll just have to monitor it. 
But let's get Freddy's gauges in there because I'm keen to turn on this game and go for a drive. Yeah, so I've fitted them in there. Now, um, I could have drilled a hole in the cluster, but I don't, well, I don't want to. I don't have much faith in these gauges, so the wire will just tuck in, go under there. Is this the, the most bodgiest gauge install I've ever done? Yes. I usually take a lot of pride in when I put my gauges in that. But, but is it in there? Is it practical? Can I see it? Will it work? Okay, um, there's nothing wrong with your audio syncing. This is that moment when I was reviewing the video and actually noticed that um, the sound cut off on this clip halfway into it. So, okay, for the record, yes, the, the gauges should work. That, that's what I did say. And the rest was just blah, 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 blah. Never buying cheap Amazon microphones again. Okay, we got the loom from the front to the back. I'll show you what I've done because I've got pretty busy. Momentum's one of those things when you get it you go. Now I put the switch here for the, the for the exhaust cutout only because all the way to here this plastic thing on my bob which you know I've got to replace. Well it seems alright but a bit of damage on it now. Um it's it's too thick, it's got something going on at the back of it, it's like a provision. Now all the wiring I am running for here and for the cutout I've drilled a hole and I am gonna silicon that. It's not the first time I've done it. Once you seal it well, it's fine. I just need to now wire this all up. I'm rushing because I, I, I want to beat the light. This is why I sort of not filming it um, every step. And um, just wish me luck because I fucking get all the wiring done today. Then that means tomorrow we which think it runs, I guess. Just like that, we have wired it, um, um, it in. That's for the, the gauge. That's all wired up. We tap the earth from the front. Now I'll show you how the gauges work. The gauges do work. I actually um, turned it on before and it's showing 42 psi in the engine bay on the, on the fuel pressure um, needle and it was showing 42 pressure um, here. So 42 psi and, sorry, that's my dash cam. And the boost gauge, it does appear to work. So what that means now is we're ready for tune. Firmer fans are in, cutout valve is working. Let's tune this thing. Let's see if it works. Let's see if the FMU does its job. I'm gonna give it a crack tomorrow and uh, I got my fingers crossed. If not, then we gotta spend another day on it or two to just sort out a few things. But I'm now confident. Plus there's also leaks and that you never know that's gonna show up. But um, yeah, let's send it, eh?